Today, let's start with a poem. This is by Kevin Kruger, and it's about a sweet little old lady. Sweet little old lady by Kevin Kruger. There was a sweet old lady who couldn't climb into bed. If she didn't get sleep, she soon would be dead. Her bed was too high, she said with a sigh. A step stool is a must from Ryan Zeldenrust. Well, hold on to your cat, lady. I'm about to solve your problem. Well, let's get started on this stool. Here we go, milling up some rough lumber. Now, if I would have been smart, I would have designed this first and been going to the big box store to get two boards that I could cut up with 10 cuts to make this board. I will have plans on my Etsy store for four or five bucks that you can go there and buy those and it'll have the cut list on the two easy boards. Not all this milling, so it did take me a while, but I know now. But here I am just milling this lumber up, getting it ready. And I do cut out the handle and the tall part of this stool with my CNC machine, but you could use a bandsaw or a jigsaw. I just make so many of these stinking things, it's easy for me to just program it, throw it on the machine and go on with other work. And it's more precise than what I could do by hand for sure. And here I am using the Harbor Freight pocket hole jig. You don't have to have the best of tools, but sometimes you need them like the domino here. And I know I'm gonna hear it, it's a domino. You don't have money for a domino. I'm gonna put a link up above right here that shows Tamara's new video about seven options you can use. She's Tamara's from 3x3 Customs. So if you don't have a domino, there's other options until you can earn a domino, because trust me, this thing does what it does so well. So go earn a domino. I earned mine. I worked a long time to get that puppy, but uh, boy, it makes glue ups and aligning everything so much easier. And when you're doing production work, that's great. If you wanna do things by hand, do it by hand. Do mortise and tenon here if you want to. I just don't have time for that. So glue everything up. I use lots of glue, just wipe up the squeeze out. I want everything to stick. I'm gonna have old lady stand on this thing. It's gotta be pretty secure. Wipe up all that squeeze out. And then, hey, Harbor Freight clamps, look at that. Don't have to have the best of the best, just have to have something that gets the job done, right? And make sure everything is completely square. Wipe up any squeeze out. Uh, checking for square there. This is a middle support board. This is what's gonna hold, keep the top from sagging. And also it's what I'm gonna use to drill into later on, which you'll see when I start drilling into it. And put a little round over on everything. You don't want to stub a toe on a sharp corner. That would hurt. And you also put round overs on this tall part here where the handle is. You, you want to have it a comfortable grip. Eh, makes it a little more attractive than sharp edges too. And just making sure the grip is good. I'm filing off any high spots or sharp points, just making it look nice and feel nice. And of course, hand sanding. You're always gonna need that. If you don't hand sand, you should, it really helps. And speaking of sanding, we're gonna do more. And hand sand, sand sanding, again. It helps, you can really get fine detail with the hand sand, with hand sanding versus using the sander. And the old sanding trick, write with a pencil all over your work and then start sanding and when the pencil's gone, guess what? You're done. Woo! Now on to my first mistake with this build and hopefully it doesn't come to bite me in the butt later, but I put glue all over this piece and I should only put a strip down the middle. Um, by putting glue all over this, the boards expand and contract in different directions, so I hope I don't get cracking later on. Well, well fingers crossed, huh? Now I'm just gonna use a nail gun just to throw a little brad in there, a pin nail on this one, just to hold the board in place. Let that glue dry, put the top on, and done! 
Oh, no, wait. I have to do more work. So here, I'm just taking a slot cutter and I'm gonna put some Z-clips to hold that top step, the top piece of the step onto it. So I take that cutter and uh, I just cut a few little slots in there. On this one, I cut a lot. My step board was a little bit warped and you'll see here, I have a few too many on one side. Well, that's just to hold that warp down. But I pop my Z-clips in and screw them down to that top step, holds it in place allows for expansion and contraction you know because that's something I pay attention to like when I put all the glue all over all right here's some mineral spirits I'm just gonna clean this puppy up get rid of a bunch of the excess sawdust that's on there and sometimes I like to do it just to see what it's gonna look like and look at that grain pop on that part that's that's crazy looks great here I'm just using a half inch Forstner bit because I'm going to drill holes through this into that support that I had pocket holed in underneath and pilot hole right there. Here's a little trick, a little dry lube. When you have a really long screw you got to put there, put a little dry lube on it. These are four inch screws. And it will help it glide so much easier to the wood watch. It just goes right through. Not a problem at all to it with the second one and then after this we're going to end up cutting some plugs to put in there and uh, I'll show you the plug cutter I use for that this is a I think it's a Montana plug cutter it's a half inch plug cutter it's a pretty big one it gets pretty beefy so you got to be careful when you're uh, when you're drilling with it so it doesn't catch on the wood and spin the wood but I take a little scratch all, I pop a little hole to hide, to guide that uh, plug cutter into the wood. And that's a piece of poplar just like this stool is made from. Press down, take the scratch off, pop that plug right out of there. These, this thing is great. You make your own plugs. You can use whatever grain to get it to match. So I tried to match the grain as best I could. And now I'm just uh, getting a piece of cardboard because my flush trim saw just seems to leave scratches or I'm just not good using it. But I super glue that plug in there pop this piece of cardboard right over the top of the plug and I saw it off. It's not completely flush, but that's why we have sandpaper and chisels. So I got that in there. You're wondering, how are you going to get that glued in? Well, I'm going to get a little sawdust going there. And now I'm going to just sand and sand and sand, get it a little closer to level. And then I'm going to put a whole bunch of wood glue right around where any of the gaps are. It was a pretty tight fit, but there were still gaps. And I just sand, fills in all those gaps. When the glue dries, you'd never know. Chisels just to get it a little more even because it's a little rough. It was almost dome shaped on those, so I wanted to cut them flush. And a little more sanding, a little more glue just to fix where I messed up. And then uh, we'll fill in all the little brad holes with some glue too. And sand over those, it's just easy filler there. Little mineral spirits, get up the sawdust, make it look clean. The excess sawdust. Now, Rubio Monocoat, I'm gonna hear it. Oh, it's so expensive, whatever. Use it, it's the easiest there is. Now, if you haven't done this trick before, I just take a solo cup, I cut it in half, flip it over, put the inside in. It won't tip over no matter what you do. You can bump it, it's just gonna slide on the table. It's not like the small little base on it anymore, like a solo cup. So, anyway, I take my Rubio Monocoat, this is chocolate color, I think, and uh, I'm gonna mix it there's part a part b um, i mix them into that little solo cup i just use a little syringe it's a three to one mixture mix it up and why you want to know why i use mono coat as much as i can because it its name says it all mono coat i don't have to sand over and over with each coat i with each coat there's only one coat you know and there's no fumes i'm not breathing nasty fumes the color is great you can't overlap the color you know if you stain something and you wait five minutes and go stain again it's gonna keep absorbing all that stain and you're gonna have funky streaks. You don't get that with Monocoat. Monocoat is also easy to repair. If you get a scratch or something or the customer says, oh man, I, I damaged it, I scratched, scratched it. It's so easy to fix. You just take one of those little scotch bright pads, you take the stain, you rub it all over, and just rub it in so it gets into the grain. And once, once you cover your whole piece, I mean, Look at that, I'm going over it again and again in different spots. You'll never see that on the finished product. You don't even really have to let it soak in much. It only takes a little bit of time and it's already catalyzed with the wood. So 
get it at all on there nice nice and thick rub it in there squish it into the grain and then you just grab a shop towel and you just wipe off the excess and you know what once that's done i never have to touch it again it is stained it is finished i don't have to put on lo loads of poly on top i don't have to put anything on top i don't have to wax it it's got a wax built in rubio monaco is the best finish in cases like this for furniture there are better finishes for you know cutting boards and things like that but when you're building something like this this is the best okay that is that simple i don't i'm done finishing it doesn't take me days it took me minutes i lost some footage coming up here uh i didn't get to show that putting the tape on the grip tape on the step but i think that's kind of self-explanatory and i'm showing you a few others that i had made before now i have these plans they'll be available on etsy they'll be four bucks i have cnc plans if you want to be able to cut out your own i'll sell those for like two bucks or something simple on my etsy store i'll leave a link down below but uh if you want to make one it's real simple that has a cut list everything you need to make this except for the lumber the tools and all that but there's a list of tools that you would need so beyond that uh, if you liked the video, like it. If you didn't, say you didn't like it. Otherwise, go ahead and subscribe or watch the next video. Thank you. Appreciate it.